Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the promise.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. When he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, 
and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. St. Luke recounts what was a kind of waiting room experience for the disciples. In the opening verses of Acts, Jesus, at his departure, orders the disciples to not leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. Two interesting things here. First, Jesus orders them to wait. And second, the waiting is for the delivery of the promise. Waiting and promises are joined. For the disciples, waiting meant staying in a city that was overtly hostile to them. Jesus had been crucified. Stephen will be stoned. Judas had taken his own life. It was not a safe place to be. Even though the disciples had encountered the risen Lord who, go, who gave them hope, they naturally still had fear. Their hope was tinged with fear. Peter's letter of encouragement really gets to the gist of the danger that staying put and waiting entailed for them, calling it a fiery ordeal. He doesn't sugarcoat it. They are reviled, disgraced, and in for a most tangible suffering. It will take the palpable fire of the Holy Spirit to sustain their courage for the ordeal ahead, but they don't have that yet in the waiting room, and they don't have Jesus. He's gone again, disappeared, ascended. As to waiting, we all know how uncomfortable, how tiresome that can be, especially when the waiting period is indefinite. As a result of the pandemic, we're waiting for things to get back to normal or to understand what a new normal will be. Millions, millions of our neighbors have lost their jobs and are waiting to hear when they can work again. Students are waiting on details about what the next school year will be like. We're all waiting on a vaccine and improved therapies. We're all waiting to return to church and other gatherings where we can be in groups again without worry. The list of things the pandemic has put in suspension is enormously long. And independent of the pandemic, we each have hopes and dreams and aspirations 
pain and brokenness for which we await fulfillment and healing. What is it that you are waiting for today? In your private reflection and in your family conversations, ask, what is it that I am waiting for? We each have our unique answer to that question. We're each waiting on multiple things, some profound and some banal. For instance, lately I've been waiting for a guardianship hearing for my father who's aging, but I've also been waiting, as you can tell, to get a haircut. A second related question is, how do I feel as I'm waiting? The answers will vary depending on what it is I'm waiting for. Am I waiting in anticipation or in dread? Am I nervous or sad, peaceful or excited? Am I suffering pain while I wait? Or am I too preoccupied with ministry to feel that pain? As human beings, we just spend a lot of time waiting, don't we? It being the Sunday before Memorial Day, we think of all the military households and all the waiting that they do, waiting for deployment and promotion, all the moving they have to do, and the waiting that goes with that and especially the ones that face combat, soldiers, airmen, sailors, marines and coast guardsmen who wait for engagement on the battlefield and the terrible wait back home for news in the aftermath of the battle, who survived, who didn't make it. Sometimes that news is the worst possible. We remember them today with special intention. Since we can't thank them in person, we offer thanks and prayer for the ultimate sacrifice they made for our country. And we know a difficult waiting was a companion to every one of them. Thanks be to God that the gospel meets us in the waiting room and carries us beyond. It comes down to the second point, I think, Jesus' promise. Jesus promised that if we love him and obey him, he would send a powerful helper, the Holy Spirit, that he's going to prepare a place for us in heaven that we will be with him in new and unending life, a new birth into a living hope. In short, a life of joy. The disciples could stay and wait and pray because they believed Jesus' promise. That promise is for us too. In the Gospel of John today, we learn that Jesus waits with us. Jesus is waiting with us right now, praying with us and for us. Jesus is making earnest intercessions for us, asking for our protection and our unity. And we know that Jesus' prayer is effective because his will is in perfect harmony with God's will. They are one. The reflection we make today about the waiting we're doing is the content of meaningful prayer with Jesus. The psalmist gives us a delightful phrase that applies when we join our prayers with Jesus as we wait. We become merry and joyful or as another version reads, jubilant with joy. 
jubilant joy. Do you believe that's possible? Well, that's what good waiting will sometimes get us, I believe. We affirm our love for Jesus by entering the waiting room, facing reality, and placing our trust in his promises as the disciples did. You can just about see Peter pacing back and forth. He's waiting, but he's forgiven, and he's eager to feed some sheep. And there's Thomas with us. He's piecing together the forensic evidence, making sense of all the wounds, and he's preparing himself to die with Jesus. Mary is here. All the women are with us. No doubt, no doubt busy mending the tattered disciples, faithful and attentive. They've shown capacity to face the uncertainty, making additional room in the waiting room. Each of the disciples has a unique perspective on what happened in the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, how it affected them. And they would have shared their stories with each other in the waiting room, rehearsing the witness that they would make to the world. We're doing the same thing, each of us with a story of our hopes and fears about how we are saved by Jesus. And we're all together in the waiting room. Could it be that all this waiting that we, that could it be that in this waiting that what we're waiting for is not so much a what as a who. That who we are really waiting for is the Holy Spirit to fill every event and every experience of waiting with the power of God. That is exactly what will happen according to Jesus' promise and prayer. On the east on the east wall of the church is St. John's beautiful rose window. On this Ascension Day, Ascension Sunday, excuse me, we see in the center of that win window the image of Jesus on the throne of heaven. Having ascended there, making the sign of blessing on his people. Each of the petals bearing the stories of the 12 apostles. What you cannot see from afar is the inscription which says the window was dedicated to the memory of all those killed in war. It reads, and I quote, in grateful memory of all who gave their lives for our country. Today, is a most apt day to ponder that window and all that it represents. And so we practice our waiting, prayerfully, hopefully, and together, until that day when we won't have to wait any longer, the day when we meet Jesus face to face in heaven on his throne. Wait well, my friends, the Holy Spirit is on the way. Being of one substance. 
the judge, both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And that I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is forsaken by thy fathers. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, our bishop, and the rector and clergy of our parish, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, Ronald, our governor, and Jane, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Harry, Baker, Mark, Robin, Jackie and family, Bill, Patty, Ansley and family, Nancy, Ray, Colin, Lynn, Rick, Paige, Emily and Megan, Tori and family, Astrid, Jeff, Rick, Sid, Suzanne, Clark, Suzanne, John, Nancy, Maureen, Michelle, Pat, David, Jonathan, Martha, Pat, Janie, Jerry, Pam, Ray, Irene, Mary, Arthur, Robbie and Meg, Darren, Charles, 
and Allen. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray especially for the staff of our parish, our pastoral care ministers, our parish day school, our companion diocese in the Dominican Republic, the members of our armed forces deployed abroad, especially Rich, Taylor, and Mike, for ourselves and all those who are suffering the effects of the pandemic. We pray for healthcare workers, first responders, and all others whose work puts them in danger because of the pandemic. We give thanks for their many, th many sacrifices for the common good. Protect them from injury and illness renew their wisdom, compassion, and strength. Let us now bring before God the names of those for whom we are concerned and our personal needs and thanksgivings. We beseech thee, O Lord, to hear the prayers of thy people. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Richard, Charles, Dolores, Joseph, and Charles Sr. <clears throat> beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins against unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most fiercely have committed, by fault, order, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly by thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all ye that prevail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And And with thy thy spirit. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. John's. It is, as our beloved rector always says, a joy to be gathered together as the body of Christ. And it is wonderful to be with you, uh, bound uh, by love. Although we are not together in body, we are, as always, uh, one family, uh, one body of Christ. I'm pleased to tell you, speaking of being in the body, that we will resume in-person worship on Sunday, June 7th. There will be procedures and controls in place to ensure the safety of all. Uh, There will be more information on those procedures coming very soon to you. Next Sunday, we celebrate Pentecost, and our worship service will be a choral offering of morning prayer. We will continue with this beautiful and traditional form of Anglican worship until we can safely return to celebrating the Eucharist. For those of you uh, not familiar with uh, former practices in the Episcopal Church uh, dating before, uh, let's say, the mid-80s or so. Morning prayer for about 400 years was the, the main form of communal worship uh, and through most of the Anglican Communion. So this is not something that we're doing uh, only for safety precautions. That certainly is a piece of it, uh, but it also will allow us to engage with a, a very important uh, piece of our Anglican culture and our Anglican worship life. And uh, we've prepared a, a more in-depth a written piece on this that will be electronically available to you as well. So this will be a, a great chance to inhabit another form, a, a hallowed form of Anglican worship, as well as keep ourselves as safe as possible as we gather in person. And the work of your church continues even when the buildings are closed. Thanks to those of you who are continuing to pay your pledge, and special thanks to those of you who have made additional contributions. God's work in St. John's depends on your support, and we are so grateful for that support. And I am saddened to tell you that Charles Harden Sr. died early yesterday morning. Plans for services are pending. Please keep Charles, Billy, Charles Jr., and the rest of the family in your prayers. May Charles' soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
celebration of the Holy Eucharist is offered to the glory of God with special intention for the repose of the souls of those who have given their lives in the service of our country. May their souls and the souls of all that departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is his peace and right so to do. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father. Almighty, everlasting God, through thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, after his glorious resurrection, manifestly appeared to his disciples, and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also be, and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and say. Likewise, 
house after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate in thee with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from 
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou hast seen us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son and our Savior Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, and we humbly beseech thee, O heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, God.